G'day, this is Cable54, and you're watching how I made an album solely out of Korg Vulcans. Alright, g'day there. Um, it's Cable from Cable54. How are you doing? Um, this is uh, the second video in a little set of videos that I'm making um, to go over um, how I made um, my album Vulcan Galaxies. Um, completely out of Volkers. Um, so I made a, uh, made a record completely out of Volkers. It was put out on a little record label. And um, this is the second video in the series that, um, that I'm going to uh, explain how I did it. So um, the first video was kind of like the, um, the introduction and um, you know a bit of my inspiration. And so we went through all that back then. Um, so this next video, um, this one, is uh, going to all be about the, um, the setup and the, um, the composition. Of, um, of some of the songs. So um, let's get into it. Um, so the first, the first part of it, uh, the setup, we can go through that with this, um, you know, we can have a look at this little video here. It's kind of pretty simple, you know, I explained um, earlier on why I wanted to have um, the Vulcans themselves and you can see here with this, um, with this little, little video, you know, I've got the four, I've got the four Vulcans and um, yeah, it's pretty simple. I chose the um, chose the beats, the uh, FM, which you can see right there, the um, the bass, and the uh, and the keys, and they all kind of had like different roles in different songs. Of course, um, you know they're all kind of pretty flexible. So sometimes the um, the keys would play the part of um, would play the bass the bass tracks, um, and you know the bass the Volker bass would be um, kept for melodies and stuff like that. Um, other times the FM would would form the bass line. Um, the song that we'll go over in a second um, kind of has the FM as the bass line. Um, and you can also see there, um, I've got the little um, Behringer, um, I think it's um, an MX400 as the mixer. So I really wanted to keep my setup as basic as possible because the whole thing before, um, before I wanted to make an album with this was that I wanted to really just make songs that I could take out live and play live at, um, at bars and at clubs um, around Melbourne, my city. So I really wanted to keep it as compact as possible so I could put it all in a little suitcase and just take it out um, and it would be easy for me to set up. Um, so that was part of the reason why I got this, um, got the MX400. I actually got um, a bigger mixer before that, but that was just a disaster and I had to kind of, it was just way too big and I had to, um, I'd sell it and I decided to get this little bad boy. And it's been great, you know, it, um, it's super basic. It doesn't have obviously any EQ or anything like that. Um, yeah, super basic, but it was perfect for live. And that's kind of um, how I composed all the tracks as well. The other aspect of the setup that you can see is um, just here with the um, the KV gear, the, um, the, all, all, the, um, the power supply, it's all powered by the same cord, so it just requires one plug into the power. Um, I didn't want to rely on batteries when I was playing live, I wanted to, um, I wanted to have, um, have it all come from mains power. Cool, so I wanted to add this little, I wanted to add this little section about the mixer, uh, the MX400 and how it's connected to my headphones and the headphones that I use, used for, um, for listening while I was composing. So the headphones are about, they're more than 10 years old, maybe even 15 years old. Um, the Sennheiser, I think they're DH280s, um, so they're really great headphones, but these are just like, they're super old and as you can see, super beat up but they were fantastic and um, you know, I couldn't, um, I, I used the, um, I used different monitors for mixing, but um, this was what I used primarily for the composition uh, phase. And yeah, I kind of just, you know, I went with them because I just wanted to use what I had and um, it, took, it turned out pretty well. All right, cool. So um, in this little section, I'm going to talk about um, how I wrote the tracks. So how I wrote each of the songs, or how I wrote the songs um, that became the um, seven album tracks. And um, in thinking about doing this, I kind of decided that um, it would be more helpful to explain the concepts that uh, the concepts that I kind of had in my mind of how I went about 
creating the track. So rather than go through each song and say, this is how I composed this part and this is how and why I composed this part, I thought I would explain um, more an overall idea, a more broad idea of, um, of the different concepts that I found um, or that I followed um, to create the whole thing, um, to write the songs. All right, so the first concept is, um, is, my, is mindset, like how I, what kind of mindset I took into this whole thing. Now, the first thing that I wanted to do, the first kind of mindset thing that I had was to really learn each of the Volkers, okay? You know, they're pretty simple machines, but there's also um, a reasonable amount of, um, there's a lot to know, you know, especially I hadn't, I hadn't done a lot of hardware stuff before, really any hardware stuff before, so I really took the time to learn each Volker um, separately. So I bought them separately, like first I bought the beats and then I think I bought the keys and then the FM and then the bass. And you know, they're similar, each of the Volkers, but you know, the sequences are different. Like the way that you can sequence stuff is different on each of them. And the way that, um, the way that you can make a, um, you know, obviously the sound is different and the controls for the, um, you know, controls in the way that melody works. And, um, you know, they're, they're different. So I really took the time to learn each of them before I kind of started um, jamming together. So that was one really big thing that I did. Um, the next kind of thing that I did was that, um, you know, when I was practicing, um, I practiced a lot. So I kind of, um, I spent, um, you know, I have a day job, I work during the day. Um, so I spent a lot of evenings working, on, um, just practicing and, um, and just, jamming, whether it would be jamming on one particular song or jamming on one Volker, just trying to learn. I put in a lot of time, right? I put in a lot of time to it and I think that was really key um, in terms of the mindset. So another concept was that I wasn't, um, or another part of the mindset was that I wasn't afraid of making shitty tracks, okay? Um, in the past when I've made music, sometimes I've kind of tied myself up in knots trying to make something perfect or make something, um, you know, really fantastic straight away. And if I wasn't feeling great about the track or if I wasn't feeling really inspired straight away, I'd kind of get a bit down on myself. With this, instead, I tried to be more open to me making like crappy little tracks and just as practice. Um, I'm gonna bring up a little video of me making one of those crappy little tracks. You can see, you know, I was, I just, I think I'd only had three of the Volkers at this stage. And, um, you know, I was making this uh, crappy little track in my living room in front of, the, um, in front of that hanging up washing. And it was, um, you know, it was, it was just part of the learning, you know. And I kind of, um, you know, I kind of took the mindset that um, I would have to make a lot of crap tracks in order to make good ones. So I probably made, you know, like four times the amount of jams um, than actually appeared on the album because a lot of them were just crap and I kind of like ha had to sift through a lot of um, junk to get to the good songs and I think that was really helpful for me to actually um, compose the whole thing and pull it all together. So the next, um, so the next uh, kind of part of the mindset that I, that I had, uh, what have I got here? Was um, was trying to be um, was taking away distractions, right? So I had um, I had a room um, that I was composing in most of the time, and it was um, I, I didn't take a computer in that, right? I didn't take my phone in that. When I was there to practice, I was just there to practice, and I found that um, really really helpful, and um, it was good. Okay, cool. So the next concept. Um, you know, the first one was mindset. The next concept that I had was um, having an idea of what I wanted to do. So when I went in and composed a track, I didn't go in there kind of um, with this blind idea of, I'm going to try and compose a track today. You know, I had an idea, I would come up with a specific idea. Like, I want to compose a, tra a, a track with a kind of ambient sound that has a beat, right? And then I would try to do that. Or... I want to try to do something else that was really specific, right? I want to try and create the fastest song that I've ever created, just as an exercise. So I had an idea of what I was trying to do, and then I would do that. 
um, that was really helpful for me with the comp with the composition because it meant that I wasn't kind of going into each session kind of blind or without an idea. You know, I think we've, like I've definitely gone into plenty of kind of trying to write songs and it's just like, well, am I trying to write a song or am I just practicing? What kind of song am I trying to write? I tried to get rid of that by being very specific. Um, another aspect of like what I was trying to do and um, when it comes down to composition and having an idea is that um, I was kind of specific sometimes on being inspired by specific things. So I'd be inspired by a particular song um, and then I would, sometimes what I would do as an exercise is to try to recreate that song with the Volkers or at least recreate some part of it and then use that as a jumping off point to create the rest of the song. So I wasn't like ripping off the song or anything, but sometimes I would rip off a bass line, right? Or I would, um, or I would take a melody and try to turn that melody into, I would try to recreate that melody and then turn it into something different. And then that thing would form the basis of the track. So the example I wanted to show you for that was this little video that my, um, that my little brother um, sent to me and he kind of found, he made this like goofing off little video with his friends and, um, and it has, uh, but it's got this, um, it's got this kind of um, corporate music ringtone thing to it. Um, so this is it, this is it right here. Um, you know, it's a funny little video, but you can hear the music that, do -do -do -do, you know, you can hear the music. That. Um, and so I really like that. I really like that little beat, that little groove, and so I went to recreate it, and, um, and I did, and uh, you know, I recreated it on the Volkers, and you can hear it actually, it became the very first track on the album, so um, you can hear it now, you can hear how it's kind of similar, um, and it's, uh, yeah, how it's kind of similar to that original track, now we'll hear the original track again, and now hear the um, hear my track, and you can hear how it kind of is very similar with that with that bass line. But then the rest of my track just becomes something completely different. And I think um, most people probably well, I know because I've pointed out to a few people. Most people don't um, don't pick it up unless it's very specifically um, shown. So or I or unless I really explain it to them. I'm like you know listen to this and listen to that. So. Um, that was another really specific tool that I used um, to compose was sometimes being directly inspired by other well, by other music and I think that that's fine. Okay, cool. So um, the next concept that I wanted to go through when it comes down to composing the tracks was working in a key. Okay, so working in a key is important because, you know, it's a musical thing and it sounds good. I mean, it's not important for all kinds of music, but for me, I definitely wanted my songs to have a the kind of musical quality that I was um, I wanted I wanted things to be in tune and I wanted um, I wanted to be um, I wanted the songs to be in in key right so all the songs didn't need to be in a specific key but I wanted each song to be in a specific or in in a key okay so most of the songs that I worked with I created in C um, the key of C now, um, so that was that was important for me to do. Um, of course, it veers off a little bit every now and again, but most of it was in C. I think the second track was in D, and something else was in A or something. But that was really helpful for me as well in composing, in terms of giving me another kind of guide and another limitation um, to help kind of um, move the composition of the tracks forward. So. Um, the next little concept that I'll go through when it comes down to composition was how, was building a groove, okay? So I really felt like, you know, so I'd be sitting there, I'd be have my Volkers out, I'd be practicing and I'd be like, okay, I'm trying to make a track here. And it was really my, um, the goal was to get to a point where I have a groove going on. So where I, I have like a little, you know, one bar section or four bar section where it's, um, where there's like a bit of a beat there's a bass line and there's a melody, okay? That was kind of like the very first, that was like the first step to having a great, having one of the songs. Once I got to that kind of like repeatable, um, repeatable groove, the loop, you know, the, the vocal loop, um, it was, um, 
I really felt like I was um, uh, that, was, that most of the work was done in terms of composing the song, or half of the work was done. Because from there, um, when it comes down to composition, it was really about you know um, structuring the song. So like growing up to that loop, like you know um, slowly building to that loop, and then bringing down from that loop, and then um, maybe changing some things, bringing back up, bringing it back up, and bringing it back down. And I think you can hear that through most of the songs, but getting to that very first groove was kind of like something that was a, a goal with each of the tracks. Okay, um, right. And then so the the last um, the last little concept that I wanted to talk about. Um, when it comes down to composing was practicing and playing live. That was really, really important to me, playing live. Um, and it was actually so important that that's what the entire next video is going to be about. It's going to be all about playing live. And so I'm going to make a whole little video for that so that you can see that. Um, yeah, so that's, the, um, so that's the video on my setup and composition. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I hope you've taken, taken something from it. Um, you know, it's been a bit of a long video, but, um, yeah, I hope you've taken something from it. Um, yeah, if you, uh, if you want to hear the album that I'm, that I'm talking about, that I've made, um, you can hear it, uh, just here. Um, so there should be a link somewhere. And, um, and if you want to buy it, that would be cool too. Um, yeah. Um, all right, cool. Um, otherwise, um, you can leave some comments or ask me any questions and maybe I'll answer them in a the future video. Um, otherwise, cool. Thanks for watching. Um, appreciate it.